Shalom Saints, how are you all doing today? Shalom, you are welcome to this live stream once again. I'm your host, Sister Dalila Dush Santush. I hope you are ready for another day of being fed by God himself through his word. So I'm waiting for all of you. Sister West Harmling Plant, Sister Brenda, how are you? Shalom, Shalom Saints as you come in. Shalom, Sister Saidi. Shalom, GMAC. Thank you for the gift, Sister. Sister Shelley, Shalom. Shalom, Sister Maria. Shalom. Shalom, Shalom. And those giving your tidings and offerings, may the good Lord bless you. May the good Lord increase you. May the good Lord continue to provide for you. If I cannot see your name, you will be on the list for, the, for prayer. Don't worry, I'll be praying for you. Good afternoon, sunset. God bless you. Shalom. Shalom, saints of God. Shalom. Shalom, mumsy for real. Shalom. Asyao. Shalom. Shalom, sister Kim. Shalom, Grant. Shalom, endless M. Shalom. Shalom, saints. Shalom, sister Lorian. How are you today? I'm so glad to see you. Sister Summer, good morning, Sister Summer. How are you? Brother Garrett Morgan, how are you, brother? Sister Portia Sleek, how are you all doing today? Sister Blessings, as usual, thank you for the gifts. May the good Lord continue to increase you, to bless you, to uplift you, and to grant you the desires of your heart in Jesus' mighty name. Sister Nadi, Shalom. Melissa, Shalom. Doc, Doc Ramos, Shalom. Shalom, Saints. Shalom, Saints. Shalom, Sister Danielle. Shalom, West Harmon Plants. Shalom. Shalom, brother. Shalom. Shalom, sister Danielle. Shalom, beloved. Shalom. Shalom, saints. Did I? Oh, God bless you. <laughs> Thank you, sister Asiao. <laughs> Shalom, Janet. Shalom. Shalom. Thank you very much, sister Brenda. I'm very, very thankful for the compliment. I'm trying. <laughs> shalom. Shalom, saints. Shalom, worthy fox. 64. Shalom. It's Winnie. Hi, Winnie. Shalom. Shalom, sister Emily. Thank you for the gift. God bless you and answer all the desires of your heart. Sister Beth, as you join in, you are blessed and highly favored woman of valor in Jesus' name. Sister Meg, how are you today? I'm good. Sister Rose, shalom. Shalom, sister Pamela. Shalom, beloved saints, as you come in. Oh, yes. Thank you, sister Siao. God bless you. Thank you so much. Shalom, Jane. Shalom. Shalom, saints. As you join in, shalom. God bless you all. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Sister Portia Sleek, shalom. Sister Gail, how are you today? Shalom. It's Winnie. Shalom from Kenya. Shalom. Fun Fitness. Shalom, beloved sister. Hair and Beauty Pal. All those of you with businesses joining in, may the good Lord bless your business establishment and uplift you and that you will never run dry in your profession, but you will always have clients and advance in Jesus' name. God bless you. Sister Temba Lily, God bless you. Dambisa Gordon, God bless you. Sister Samantha, Shalom. Shalom, Blue Oceans. Shalom, Saints, as you join. Relatable Talk. Shalom, Sim Sims. Shalom, Shalom, it's Q. Shalom, sister. Shalom, sister. Shalom. Shalom, sister Fiona, God's anointed. Shalom. Shalom, God bless you all, saints of Almighty God, as you join in. Shalom. Elaine Findlay, Shalom, and God bless you. Shalom, Autumn. Shalom, beloved sister. Shalom. Shalom, saints. Shalom, Mandy. Shalom, Watson, Andrea. As I greet the saints today, saints is going to be a powerful ministration, right? I want you to get the Bibles, your Bibles ready, your coffee, your tea, and whatever it is. I don't want you to be leaving your seat where you are receiving this ministration today because it is very important that you get fed today by the word of god that you get this ministration today that you understand what it is that the lord is communicating with all of us here on this live stream so saints i hope you all have your bibles and everything ready and another thing i want to say saints is this 
I'm asking you all that when the ministration is going on, don't put any other scriptures that have nothing to do with the scripture of the day, because this can be a bit confusing. Another thing that I want to warn the saints is that some of you, when the prophetic hour comes, you are identifying, writing me, 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 when it's not you. Don't do this. Number one, you are disrespecting God because you are thinking that this is just, you know, playtime. It's nothing serious. Number two, the person who really should identify will sit down and say, well, it's not me. Somebody else has identified. So I don't need to identify myself. So what happens is that the person later on will inbox me and say, oh, I'm not too sure if it was me because another person identified. This is causing confusion and the Lord is not happy with confusion. Let us have order in the service. If the spirit of the living God is telling you to identify. Identify only if it's you. All right? I'm asking you, please, let us have order in the service. You are now used to our routine and also to facilitate the moderators as well to be able to pin the scripture and then everybody will be focused because unfortunately not everybody can come here on time. Some people are at work. Some people could be doing something and they cannot watch the full stream and they will go on youtube and this is not right for them as well it's good that they come in log in and they can see the scripture and they know exactly what are we talking about today so saints another thing that i want to um say is that a lot of testimonies have been happening saints and the lord has been good to many people on this stream he has been blessing people with um homes people in need of a house have been receiving their blessing um career wise and in terms of employment so god has been blessing a lot of people even in terms of some people going back to school to further their education so when you are here be sincere before the throne of god ask him sincerely and ask him with faith and i know that god shall supply not only your needs but my needs as well because we are trying our best to come before the lord with a repentant heart with our needs and he is faithful to us when we are sincere all right another thing some people are big are upset because i am praying for those who, who offer their tidings and offerings in the end and i have a list look if you are upset, don't come back because for two hours, I'm praying for everybody. When the hour comes for prayer, I'm not saying, no, I'm only praying for those who are on the tidings and offering list. No. And also not only that, when the prophetic hour comes is for everybody. I am counseling people free of charge. I'm not charging anyone. What else do you want? If somebody comes to this ministry with a tithing and offering, right? They need prayer because they have consecrated that first fruits. Somebody has to pray for them. So what do you want? Somebody has to pray to consecrate, dedicate their tidings and offerings to God and speak over their lives. All right. So don't be upset and think, oh, sister, Dalila is only praying for those who, who are giving their tithing and offering. That is not true. So please, this is not right. And I'm very upset. Because you know that I'm here, ministering is free of charge. I pray for everybody when the prayer time comes. I'm not saying, oh, this prayer is only for so and so and so and so. Let us be very clear about that. All right. I don't want anyone to be upset and think, oh, I'm left out. No, I'm here to your service for two hours. And then I always say, if you're not on a list, you're free to go. All right. So th that is your choice. But I will continue to do this because the people who are keeping me going, I have to dedicate their tidings and offerings to God. So that's it. So if you think I'm not genuine and, and you are free to go where you feel that you are growing spiritually, no one is pointing a gun at your head and tell you to stay here. All right. So don't get offended. Saints, let us consecrate this live stream unto the Lord. And I trust that you have your Bibles already in place everything ready your tea your coffee oh to remind saints today we are starting the fasting i'm already in spirit of fasting i'm already fasting but in case you forgot we fast in this ministry for 15 days the first 15 days of the month we always fast all right 
So if you have forgotten, don't worry yourself. You can start tomorrow. All right. We serve a, 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 a merciful father. He's not going to punish you because you forgot. He's not going to, you know, there will be no repercussions. We all human beings. Sister Jolene, you are welcome today. May the good Lord bless you and keep you. So that's it, saints. All the moderators, I want you to know that I am praying for you every day, all right? So don't worry about any retaliation from the enemy. I'm praying for you, and I know God is also has his hand of protection over your life. Let us pray. Father Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus, we welcome you on this live stream today as usual, O oh God. We thank you for another day, Father Lord, that you have given us the gift of life. Father Lord, you are not obliged to visit us with the gift of, li of life. You are not obliged to give us salvation and anything, Lord God. But we are here because of your mercies. We are here because, Father Lord, of, of your love and your peace that surpasses all understanding. We are here, Father Lord, because you have chosen us, Father Lord, to be part, Father Lord, of your flock, of your church that one day will rise. Oh, yes, be raptured into your presence and receive a glorified body. Father Lord, we ask you once again for total forgiveness of all of our sins and transgressions, Lord God, even the transgressions of our forefathers, Lord God, up to 50 generations before us, Lord God. Father Lord, I'm asking you today, Father Lord, for your presence to be manifested here today, Lord God. I'm asking you for the Holy Spirit to take over this ministration. I'm asking you that today you will speak to your children, Lord God. Father Lord, some of them are coming here with burdens, Father Lord. Oh, Father Lord, some, some of them are coming here, Father Lord, tired. And Father Lord, they are carrying with themselves such a burden that is not allowing them to go forward, Father Lord. And they need, Father Lord, that you will stand in the gap for them, Lord God. That you will help them, Father Lord. That you will release them, Father Lord, from what it is that is oppressing them today. Father Lord, I'm asking you today, take control, authority, dominion, sovereignty over the life stream, Father Lord, over the ministration that is about to take place. And not only that, Lord God, the prayer hour, the prophetic hour, so that yokes will be broken forever, curses will be broken forever, Lord God, and that your children will be restored, Father Lord, unto your holy throne, Father Lord, that your children will have, Father Lord, in their hearts, in their souls, and in their spirits, the desire to be closer to you. The desire to serve you, Father Lord, for who you are, not for what you can give them, Lord God. Father Lord, I'm asking you today, begin to bind principalities and rulers of darkness that are present on this live stream. Seeking, Father Lord, to cause division in our midst, distractions, problems with the sound, with the internet, Lord God, and even with the, 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 the quality of the, the, the video, Lord God. I'm asking you today, bind all these principalities and rulers of darkness. Cast them all onto the bottomless feet of the abyss forever and ever. Never to have any power, control, dominion, and authority over the live stream and us that are present here, congregated, Father Lord, in your presence. Father Father Lord, whatever, Father Lord, witches and wizards and warlocks and agents of darkness have prepared for this ministration or whatever they are planning to do or are doing, Lord God, we rebuke them and we judge them in the mighty name of Jesus. That the fire that consumed the Holocaust of your prophet Elijah will fall upon them to burn them to ashes in the mighty name of Jesus. Father Lord, I pray that today the Holy Ghost, Father Lord, will uh, dwell in our hearts and our souls and our spirits so that when we receive the ministration, the Holy Spirit will begin to reveal deeper things that we had not understood before, Lord God. Areas in our lives that we are in rebellion against you and we need to repent in order to be reconciled with you. That we need to repent in order to be set free from yokes and curses and whatnot that is still speaking against us, Lord God. Father Lord, I'm asking you today, reveal yourself to your children, Lord God, so that your children will see you for who you are, so that, that your children will know exactly, Lord God, what you have called them to do, Lord God, what is the plan and the purpose that you have for them, Almighty God. I envelope all of us here on this live stream with your precious blood, Lord Jesus. I saturate the environment in which we are. The live stream, the ministration, Lord God, with your precious blood, we rebuke every distraction. We rebuke confusion in the mighty name of Jesus. We command it to go back to the 
pit of the pit of the abyss forever never to have any power control and authority over us today in jesus mighty name amen amen and amen saints i don't know if you had the opportunity to see the little video i posted here earlier but we are gonna deal with something saints that is not easy Every time the, the Lord comes to show us the ugly areas of our lives, the areas that we are not living up to the standard that he has called us to do, to live. It is easy for us to get upset, discouraged and think that, look, what is even the point when there is always something wrong with me? Let me tell you something. If God is still speaking to you, if God is still showing you the areas of your life that you are not in agreement with him, that you are not living by his standards, it means that he is still has a business with your salvation. He still wants you to make it to heaven. He wants you to live a victorious life. And that is why he keeps dealing with the issues in your life that are not in alignment with his word. So don't be upset upon the receipt of this ministration today. Take it as God is speaking to you so that you can live an abundant life. What is an abundant life? People think that a life of abundance is a life of a lot of money and influence and prestige. Yes, those are blessings of God. And if they come from God, glory be to him. But he wants you to live without sin. He wants you to live a life that you will not tolerate sin zero tolerance to sin he wants you to live a life where you are not by any means serving the enemy even if it's if it's in ignorance he doesn't want you to have anything in your possession that belongs to the enemy oh yes because the enemy comes he is very subtle in the way he comes he doesn't come violently once one time no he comes slowly surely but he comes to bring sin so that you when you stand before a holy god you you cannot pray now you cannot follow god you cannot serve him you cannot do anything you are paralyzed in your sin that's how he does oh yes some people think that oh the devil comes one time no he comes bit by bit one day he introduces a little something, something, tomorrow another something, then after tomorrow another something, and then one day you wake up and you realize that you are not the same person that you were when you received Christ, when you made a vow with Jesus. Oh yes, that's how he operates. And today he is going to be unveiled in your life. He is going to be exposed and his tactics and antics will be clear to you today so that not only you will protect yourself from his advancements against you, but that you will know how to operate in the spirit, how to pray, how to conduct yourself in the presence of the Most High God, and how to identify that the enemy is slowly introducing sin into your life. Because what is his ultimate um, desire? Is that you fall from grace. Is that you sin and you are judged and condemned and go to hell. That is why he comes to bring in things. If you notice, saying some ministries, they start well. Righteousness is preached every day, but all of a sudden the pastor, you can see that the pastor slowly is not preaching that message of salvation, is not preaching against sin anymore. You see that slowly but surely the, 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 the church, the, the, that congregation begins to get colder and colder and colder until one day they're already doing things that are worldly. They're already entertaining things in a pulpit that are demonic. Don't think that that just happened. No, perhaps you go to that ministry and you see that and you think boy man the enemy is on full attack no he introduced these things slowly all right not it's not abruptly no it's slowly that he introduces whatever he wants to germinate and and cause chaos and and cause people to fall into sin and then rebel against god so saints follow me please to your bibles book book of judges chapter 14 from verse 1 to 8. Book of Judges. Chapter 14. From verse 1 to 8. And it reads. Samson went down to Timna. And saw there a young Philistine woman. When he returned he said to his father and mother. I have seen a Philistine woman in Timna. Now get her for me as my wife. His father and mother replied. 
Isn't there any acceptable woman among your relatives or among all your people? Must you go to the uncircumcised Philistines to get a wife? But Samson said to his father, get her for me. She's the right one for me. His parents did not know that this was from the Lord who was seeking an occasion to confront the Philistines. For at that time, they were ruling over Israel. Samson went down to Timnah together with his father and mother. As they approached the vineyards of Timnah, suddenly a young lion came roaring toward him. The spirit of the Lord came powerfully upon him so that he tore the lion apart with the bare hands and he, as, he, as he might have torn a young goat. But he told neither his father nor his mother what he had done. Then he went down and talked with this woman, with the woman, and he liked her. Some time later, when he went back to marry her, he turned aside to look at the lion's carcass, and it saw a swarm of bees and some honey. Sorry, saints, I'm going to the full chapter, right? So I think we're going to have to go further, miscalculated. He scooped out the honey with his hands and ate as he went along. When he rejoined his parents, he gave them some and they too ate it. But he did not tell them that he had taken the honey from the lion's carcass. Saints, this scripture talks, is a description of Samson in his prime. Oh yes, you may all know that Samson was a judge over Israel, but there was something peculiar about Samson. Samson was a Nazarite. Oh yes, there are some vows that the Nazarites um, had to keep before the Lord so that the anointing of God, the spirit of the living God will not depart from them. And if you are familiar with the Bible, a Nazarite not only has a specific diet that he must keep, but also a Nazarite cannot touch any dead things or go to any graves or near any dead thing. He cannot. It's a vow that a Nazarite does. But in the case of Samson, he was even more special. Because it was prophesied to his mother who could not have kids that when she, would, that she was going to have a child and the child was to be a Nazarite. And then all the power that this child had and strength and anointing was in his head, in his hair. So what has happened here? We can see that Samson, a Nazarite, a man of God that had to keep certain vows, that had to keep a certain um, um, a diet and whatnot that, had, that could not come into contact with any dead thing. He killed a lion because he was a mighty man. But what happened? When he went past the carcass of the lion afterwards, that means that the, the lion was already decaying and probably flies and worms were on that lion. But there was in the middle of that lion some honey. And he scooped the honey off the lion. That is a violation of his, that was a violation of his vows of his, because he was a Nazarite. He should have never gone into that place. Number one, closer to the lion. He should have never gone. What more? Getting his hand into the lion and take, scoop out some, some honey. He, in there, he had already violated the, the, the vows of a Nazarite. But not only that, saints. He took some of this honey and gave it to his parents without telling them the origin, the origin of the honey. Where did he get the honey from? Because if his parents knew that this is what took place, that he got it from the carcass of a lion, they would have not eaten because they were Jews as well. They would not want to be unclean. Because even if you were not a Nazarite or a Levite, a, a, a Hebrew man or woman could not touch dead things and don't go through the purification rituals that are necessary. They were deemed unclean before the Lord. And if I'm not wrong, I think it was from, from sundown to, 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 to night. 
and they will have to be separate, isolated from, from everybody else. So we can see here that something, Samson had a tendency for sin, a tendency to forget his covenant with God. We all know how he ended saints. We don't have to go to that scripture. But what I am dealing with today is the fact that you don't fall into sin and perversion and all these different things that are in, you are in rebellion against God in one day. It doesn't happen like that. It happens slowly so the devil comes and lets you violate something today. And then after a while, lets you violate something else and makes you comfortable with that violation of the laws of God. He's not going to come to you and say, oh, commit adultery. He's not going to come and do that and present to you adultery in your face. That's not how he operates. What he will do is that he will come and take you to Instagram. To, to videos there of women that you shouldn't have, you, you have no business watching because you're married and you have a, your spouse and you shouldn't be, be watching these videos. So he lets you watch it and watch it and watch it until you become desensitized to sin. Now you are comfortable with it because you have been watching those videos for so long that you, you kill your conscience. You silence the voice of God in your heart. You don't, you, you block it out. And what happens is that when he sees that you have graduated from step one and you are now desensitized to sin, what he will do? He tells you go and subscribe to this dating website. And because you are already desensitized, you go and subscribe, put your picture there and begin to you know, talk to strange women. You begin to entertain them, talk to them. And he will let you do this for a while until you are comfortable talking to strange women. And while you are comfortable talking to strange women, he tests the waters and he says, right, I'm now going to make him meet somebody. Go physically to a, a location. And all of a sudden, you are now making contact to meet somebody. You go to a hotel or wherever you go, and then you commit the act of adultery. You see how he takes steps? He does not come abruptly today and say, oh, go and do this. No, that's not how it does. With Samson, it was the same thing. He killed the lion. Fair enough. He was a mighty man. What? Why not? But then... The enemy allow him to go past that lion again, that carcass, to violate his Nazarite covenant with God, to break it. And one thing about sin when it comes into your life, sin is not satisfied that you are engaging in sin. Sin wants you to invite other people to corrupt themselves with you. You the ladies, for example, you are not happy that you are going with a married man. You tag your best friend. And you tell her, oh, I'm, I'm going to a party. Let's come along. My, my sugar daddy has friends that have money. They will hook you up. They will sort you out. And then now you have invited someone else to go and sin with you. So one thing about sin, it invites people to partake. The enemy is not happy that you have engaged in sin. He wants your friends and the people around you to be influenced by your sin. We can see that Samson had violated his Nazarite covenant with God. He had to keep the vow. But what he did, he gave some of that honey that he scooped from a dead carcasses to his parents. And the reason why he did not tell his parents is because he knew that if his parents knew that they were unclean, they would not go with him to where he was going to get married or to, to get married to that lady. So therefore, he did not tell them. This is what happens when you sin. You lead other people astray. And you won't tell them that you are leading them astray because you want to be comfortable in your sin. You want to be comfortable in what you're doing. Oh, yes, it's the same. Somebody says Adam and Eve perfectly. Right. When Eve noticed that I've sinned, she had to invite Adam to join. So this is how we human beings are fashioned. 
We are not happy that we have now engaged into something, but we want to package other people to follow us to where we are going. So I'm here to say, saints, don't think that the enemy is going to come one day with a red cape and two horns to tempt you. No, he does not appear like that. He is going to come in a form of a handsome, rich, married man, a, a, a beautiful and well-endowed married woman is going to come to you as a business proposal that looks like you are going to make it in life, but you are committing crime. It's going to come to you as fraud that you think, yes, I made it now. Look, look at me. And you will ignore that what you are doing goes against God because in that moment you were thinking about yourself. You are not thinking about the things of God. When Samson touched that dead carcasses of that lion, he was not thinking about God. He was not thinking about the vows that he, he had to keep before the Lord. He was thinking about, I need some honey. I want to be able to taste something sweet. And he didn't want to carry the guilt all to himself. He gave, it some, gave some to his parents. So I'm here to say, saints, whatever you do in sin, always affect those who are around you whether your family members whether your friends i don't know but it will it will affect those who are around you and you will lead them astray some of you you are helping somebody and it's a friend because they are your friend but what you don't know you are helping that friend to advance things that are from the kingdom of darkness because you have not asked god to give you discernment you have not asked god to show you who is who you are just familiar with them you love them they are your family member and that's it that is good enough for you you don't question why people are in your life why are you drawn to certain people? Why do you help people? Have you been sent by God to, to help them? Are they sent by God to be in your life? You have to question everybody. Ever heard of that legal term that says guilty by association? If you are having things, if you have things in your home, they are illegal. Even if you did not brought it yourself it was your mother or your father or your brother when the authority comes to search the home everybody will be arrested until they can investigate and found ex find exactly who and who did what isn't that how it goes so don't think that some of you think like this oh she's my friend he is my friend so if they are doing things i have no business with that because it's their life if you don't tell them the truth, you are an enabler. Oh, yes. And remember, saints, when people are living in sin and doing sinful things, they won't tell you because they don't want you to tell them the truth. Same thing with Samson. He could not tell his parents where did he get the honey from because he knew that a rebuke would follow and his parents would not be in agreement with him. But guess what? His parents were unclean. Yes, they did not know they were unclean. Yes, they did not know what their son did. But before God, they were unclean. That was the judgment. Unclean before God. Knowingly or unknowingly, they were unclean. Some of you will say, oh, but it's not fair because they didn't know, blah, blah, blah. This is what sin does. It will make you take somebody's blame and sin and penalty upon yourself without you knowing. Some of you that are unfaithful to your spouse, you think that, oh, my wife, she doesn't know. My husband, do you know that they are partakers of your sin? Yes, because you are one with them. So when you are busy in sin and you are bringing them along. So this is why it is important that we understand the word of God. And we are always in the spirit of prayer. Asking God to order our steps. Asking God to reveal deep and hidden things that the enemy is doing so that you will not be a partaker of someone's, someone else's sin. Let me give you another example. 
If you work for a company, for example, and there you are in the departments of finances, if there is money missing in, 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 in that company, everybody that is in the, in the department of finances will be investigated. Am I not right? They are not going to say, oh, we're going to investigate only the senior management. No, they will investigate everybody because what happens? When somebody is misappropriating funds, normally they have somebody conniving with them. They don't do it alone. They will get the colleague that is probably the, 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 the superiors will get the, the ones that are under them to sign something, to conceal something. So because the... The, 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 the financial authorities know how it goes and how it operates. Everybody in that department will be under investigation. So I'm here to say, saints, be very careful who you entertain because of friendship, because they are your family members, because you are in need, because of this or because of that. Because you could be yourself trying to serve God. But the agendas of those around you are not of serving God. Therefore, they will drag you to their sin. They will take you to where they are going, which is not to the throne of God. Finally, Samson saints, he was so desensitized to the vows that he had made to God because of the incident with the carcass of the lion. That when he was pressured by Delilah, he gave up his secret. It did not happen just like that. He, he, he gradually went up in sin to commit more and more. If you notice that when he was with Delilah, what he was doing, he was drinking. Nazarites cannot drink saints because don't think that when he was there with Delilah, he was living a holy life. No. So the enemy is going to bring Little by little things that will corrupt you and desensitize you. Some of you, when you see a dead body, you are no longer shocked because you've been desensitized by films that show dismembered bodies, dead bodies, and all these different things. So now when you go out and you see somebody collapse on the road, you feel nothing. You're desensitized because you've been programmed not to have any feelings, not to have that kind of shock anymore when you see a dead person. Some of you, you have been so desensitized to immorality because of the choice of programs that you watch. Oh yes, before you were watching one or two series, but in that series there were some inappropriate bits and you said, oh, I'm going to forward it. I don't have to, I'm going to forward it. But what you don't understand is that you are desensitizing yourself. Now when he's showing full-blown something for you, you're not shocked because why? You have been programmed to be comfortable with that. And I want to say this, we are all so desensitized, saints, that when there is, for instance, a shower gel commercial or a moisturize a commercial and there is a man half naked or a woman half naked we could all be in a table as christian men and women with our children and for us it's nothing when 50 years ago 30 years ago that kind of commercial would not be acceptable on television will not it would it would not be acceptable people will all will would go and protest that look this is not right We've been programmed for a long time, especially in the Western world. The other day, God took me to watch some um, 1950s, late 1940s and 50s movies. I didn't watch the whole thing, but I watched snip snippets, all right? And God was showing me, look, this is how society was programmed to this point that people are so depraved. For that time, saints, for the 1940s, late 30s, 40s, and 50s, the attire of those ladies in those films was considered not good, was considered immoral, was considered not acceptable. But the film industry made it fashionable, made women begin to covet that attire, 
made women begin to be comfortable with that setting of immorality, of smoking and drinking and the attire that they had introducing it to the people. And now we are in 2023 when those films, we watch those films for us is nothing because, but if you look at the kissing scenes of those scenes, of those movies, back in the 30s and 40s, it was a shock. But they were pushing the agenda. They were pushing the agenda because what is the devil's ultimate goal? Is that you become perverted. That you become perverted and desensitized with perversion. That you will have no moral ground to rebuke anybody because you yourself will be partaking in it. Yes. That's why when we tell young ladies today, look, look, when you are sit, when you have sat, put your legs together. They will insult you and say, why? Why don't you tell that to men? Why don't you tell that? Because we have no moral compass. We have lost it. So a lady will be sitting down with her legs fully open on a train or on a bus without feeling that that is something wrong and a lady should not sit in such fashion. We are desensitized and we don't think that there is something wrong with it. So what happens? Perversion becomes worse and now we know what's going on. We have certain groups that are saying it's okay for their preference, even preference for, you know, little ones. It's okay. They are campaigning for it. And because the world is much more corrupted day by day by day by day, people are not longer thinking that, look, that's going to come a time that we need to draw the line. They don't think about it because why? Oh, as long as they're not harming me, as long as that, you know, it's their business. It is your business. It is your business. Because somebody's seen somebody's perversion. It is your business because it's going to affect you as well. Why? Perversion now has, leg has been legislated to be okay. We, we went silent when they said they, about their preference. We went silent when they group up. We went silent when they become to um, register themselves as this and that. And now that laws are now legisl legislating against you, you now forever cannot speak against them or against that scene. You can no longer speak. So I'm here to say that. The ultimate goal is that you will partake in it, whether you like it or not. Let me, let me tell you something. If in your company you have people that identify as something, that before the Lord God of Israel is wrong, and you are in that company, you work in that company, and you, every day you are mixing with them, you talk to them, you interact with them, what happens? You become desensitized. Then now when you go to church and your pastor is telling you, oh, this scene and that scene, Sister Dalila is telling you that scene and that scene, you will begin to say, oh, this man is so behind. Times have advanced. See, you were desensitized to sin. You no longer know what is holy and what is unholy. You no longer know what is good, what is not good. You have no morals. You have no... You know, great regard for the things of God. You don't care. Somebody said on an article, it's time for the sleeping giants to wake up, which is the church, and understand that people have their lives. People have their preferences. Can you see that? Because we, the church, we have been silent for a long time. Oh, it's not got, got nothing to do with me. I don't have such people in my congregation. It's got nothing to do with me. It's their business. They are free to do what they want. Because you kept, the church kept pushing it, pushing it, pushing it. Look at it now. It's inside of church. So I'm here to say, saints, I don't know what it is in your life that you have touched that is dead. And now that dead carcasses of a lion or whatever it is that you touched. Before the Lord, you are unclean. 
Your family before the Lord is unclean as well because whether they like it or not, they are partaking of your sin, including your children. And I'm here to say, saints, you need to assess in your life what it is that you are doing. That you have touched something dead that is now is festering. Now is merely before the Lord. But you are keeping that dead carcasses of whatever it is that is dead in your life because you are getting some honey scooped out of it. And that is your excuse. All of us, we're going to have to one day come before the holy throne of God to be judged for whatever it is that we have done. But the good Lord sends us his word so that every day one will examine himself and see, am I in agreement with the statutes of the Lord, his commandments, his righteousness, his holiness, or are in any violation? The world will tell you that it's okay with you doing whatever you are doing. Because why? The enemy wants you to go to his kingdom when you die. So he will not wake you up from your slumber. He will not tell you that you are going down a dark path. The enemy has no interest in that. And some of the spiritual leaders, I'm not telling all of them because that is not fair. There are good spiritual leaders out there, but majority, they will not confront your sin. They will not confront your perversion. They will not confront that that you are doing wrong because why? Number one, they themselves are doing worse or the same. Number two, that will decrease the revenue to their church. Number three, it will decrease the numbers of the people attending that congregation and that they will be at lost. So therefore, they have no interest in addressing your perversion. You know why people don't, spiritual leaders also don't address your perversion because they partake in it. For somebody to come and tell you that, look, you are in violation of God's commandments. They can't be doing what you are doing. A thief will never tell another thief, look, repent, you are stealing. Because that thief, he says, what about you? You're doing the same and worse. A murderer is not going to tell another murderer, look. You are in sin and in violation of the word of God because they are doing the same. So most of these people, they don't tell you because they themselves, they're in adultery. They themselves have something going on with them that they are covering. Oh, yes. So I'm here to say, since when you get into the presence of God, before rushing into asking God to give you breakthrough, give you money, give you this, give you that, ask him, Lord, are there any areas of my life that I am in sin? What, the, what are the things that I'm doing, Lord, that you are upset with me, that you are not happy with my walk? And God will reveal. Sometimes God will reveal by bringing a preacher to preach a sermon that is talking specifically about your sin. Some of you here, you are in great sin because you are keeping in your life dead things. Things that, that are dead, that serve no purpose for you. Perhaps you are still in a relationship that God has told you that, look, this relationship is dead, is decayed and rotten. Don't corrupt yourself. Come out. And when I say relationship, it could be a business partnership. It could be a, a, a boyfriend or a girlfriend. It could be a friend that you are keeping that God has already told you many times. Look, I don't want you in the company of this person. I don't want you to go into that location and meeting with those people. And God keeps constantly speaking to you, speaking to you, but you are ignoring God. Because why? You are getting some honey out of dead carcasses. You are getting, you are scooping out some honey from that dead carcasses. And that is the reason why you are keeping the dead carcasses. So that you can scoop some honey every now and again. Check yourself, saints. The world does not want you to tell you about what you are doing wrong because the world is doing everything for you to go to the pits of hell. The world will not be shocked but by your perversion because they, the world is immersed in perversion. And I'm going to say something, saints. 
Look how popularized the occult has become. I remember that in the early 2000s, we had a film about the occult with children. Look at the abomination. Children practicing all sorts of witchcraft in that film. And they were introducing the occult. They were introducing those demons of the occult to society, to all the Western world and the world in general. And we now so accustomed to it that shows that are worse than that film are now normal to even children that are five, six. Their parents are buying the merchandise, buying the backpacks, the books and everything. And when Halloween comes, the children are dressed as demons, dressed as dead people and all these different things. Because the enemy introduced these things slowly but surely. And now when you come here on TikTok and you are, for example, you make a mistake and you go on a live section. It's all tarot reading, card reading, teaching you how to cast spells, teaching you how to uh, uh, conjure demonic forces, teaching you how to talk to dead people and all these different things. Now, when we used to hear back in the days about the occult, we used to shiva. We used to say, oh my gosh, what, 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 you know, but not, not, an, not again. People who are witches and wizards and warlocks are not in the darkness. Now they, they, they have it on their pages that they are witches, they are wizards, including act actresses telling you that they do blood, blood exchange with their partners. So you need to think, you that are the older generation, could you take that sort of information in the 80s? Do you think that that sort of entertainment that we have now in the 2023, it would be okay in the 80s, in the early 90s? It would not be, it would not be okay. It would cause such a shock that people will protest. People will, those days, we remember that when people, parents did not like a show, they would write to the TV station to the, we don't like this show and this, this, and, and, and they will get so many mail from parents that they would shut down the show. Remember those days, saints? Not anymore. They are putting out every filth that there is. And we are sitting down enjoying the filth. We are sitting down enjoying whatever demonic things they are pushing day after day after day. Look at this film now that is just so popular with the pink doll, the doll that likes pink. Can you see what they are introducing to society? What kind of agenda they are pushing to young people? What do you think it's going to come from that film? Can you see that now it's very rare that you will get a, a proper mail like back in the days? Oh, yes. Look at the males that are now popular. No belt in their trousers. They wear pink shirts. They are comfortable in wearing things that are not for a gentleman. And because why? The rap industry and the pop industry of the, the music industry has put out artists out there for a long time to make you comfortable with that attire, to make you comfortable with, with a certain way people, young people dress. So now you as the parent, you see your son is wearing that, that kind of attire. You are comfortable with it because their favorite celebrity has the same coat. Their favorite s s uh, 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 singer has the same shirt. So you are comfortable with it. You don't rebuke your son. You don't rebuke your daughter. In fact, you take them to the shop that is selling the same shirt and the same trainers, same sneakers and whatnot. And what you don't understand is that you have been brainwashed. Some of you here that are watching me, your son doesn't have a belt for his trousers. A, does, a belt does not exist in your home and you have young gentlemen in your home. Come on now. Now young men, when they go to school, because here in the UK, for instance, we have uniform. Whether they want it or not, they have to wear uniform. 
when your son has a proper belt has a proper shirt and everything and the, the blazer for the church for the for, for school the other colleagues will be making fun because they the 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 shirts are out the, the the uniform trousers are baggy although they have the blazer but they are sagging so your son that goes to school with the full uniform on and the blazer and everything is looked as a, a nerd bullied now because you are telling him put on your belt put on your trousers put on everything your son is getting bullied I'm saying because I've I, I've gone through this experience. You try to teach your children something and they go to school, they are bullied for doing things properly. Even the teachers, oh, perhaps you should relax a little, bo a little more, ma'am. You know, let him have some fun because you are trying to instill, you know, good, good values to your children. Now you are seen as the parent that is a helicopter parent or... Oh, I don't know what kind of words they call us now because we want to do things properly. Society is becoming more and more deviant, perverse. And they are making your children comfortable with that perversion. They are making your children comfortable with the introduction of nakedness, participation in conversation that has nothing to do with, with a child. Even us that we are Christian. We have no business engaging in certain jokes and conversations that corrupt our spirit, our heart, and grieve the Holy Spirit. What more, child? We need to check where we have allowed this death to stink and have a stench in our lives, in our homes. Some of you, because you have given your child an electronic device or perhaps a tablet or a phone or whatnot, you now have lost all control of what your child watches and don't watches. And don't, I'm not a hypocrite, saints. There comes a time where you cannot monitor your child 24-7 because they are adolescents, they are teenagers, and obviously you're not going to be on top of a 16-year-old, a 17-year-old. That's not what I'm saying. I'm not here to say that, oh, Sister Dalila, you are such an hypocrite. No. What I want you to understand is that you have to sit down with your children and have an honest conversation. Because if you don't sit down and have an honest conversation with them, all right, you will not be able to influence them to follow Christ. The world will tell them, Everything about everything. I'm not allowed to say certain things, but the S, S word. So I'm here to say, saints, that some conversations are not comfortable for us parents to have. But if you don't have that honest conversation with your son and your daughter, what will happen? They will be groomed in the world to be comfortable with the things of the world. To be comfortable with evil. To be comfortable with perversion. The school system now is designed to welcome perversion. And welcome children in that world. So you need to have that conversation. So that when they go to the world. They go to school. They are armed with the word of God. They have a shield. of inf Information is a shield. Is a protection sense. When your child is going to school and they tell them that, oh, it's okay to identify as a cat, as a rat, and whatnot. They know the word of God and they know my mom has told me about this. This ain't right and I'm not going to be a part of it. They will have the discernment. But if you are allowing the world to tell your child everything and you don't influence them through the word of God, you will lose your child. So we are living in times now that are so perilous saints that even us Christians, we have been desensitized. How many of you, when you are watching the news and, and there is an advert for, for, for whatever it is and there is a lady naked or a man naked, no, you, you, you're okay with it because it's been so many times that you've seen it. That now doesn't move you, doesn't touch you, doesn't change your life. It's just another day of perversion. It's just another day of sin. I remember when 
what Sister Tembelil is telling is true. We would be watching a movie with our parents and when the, a kissing scene came, we did this. We were so embarrassed. But now your kids will not be embarrassed. They will just be looking at it. Because what the teacher is telling them at school and what is teaching them about intimacy is far more serious and, and perverse than that little scene that you just showed on the television or, or whatever. The music that your children listen. The music that the young people are listening these days is audio P-O-R-N. It's not in the screen, but it's in audio form. And those artists that are doing this kind of music are promoted with no talent, but they are promoted. Oh, yes. Who could ever tell that we would have audio, P-O-R-N? Who could ever tell 20, 30 years ago? We will never be, the, the things that they are singing are so perverse, are so nasty, that the fact that 13-year-olds are going to these concerts, listen, what generation will we have 20, 30 years from now? You see how the people will take the mark of the beast without any shame? Because we are being programmed. Some of you think, oh, when this mark of the beast comes, there will be great resistance. No, there won't be great resistance because the enemy is fashioning everything in the world for people to take the mark and be happy with it. Come on now. When a certain snake bite was needed for people to travel, for people to be able to work, for people to be able to do certain things. How many people took it? Without even questioning, what are the effects in my health? What are the side effects? But because they wanted to travel, because they wanted to continue in that work establishment, because they wanted their business to still be open, they went and, and took it. So what makes you think that people are gonna run from the mark of the beast? Let me give you another revelation that God was giving me the other day. You see this AI business that is happening? You see this AI business? Let me tell you something. I believe that there will be some sort of AI projection. That people, when it's the mark of the beast, people will have to worship that, that representation, that image of the beast. I'll take you back to the book of Daniel. I know it's not relevant, but we are talking about sin. I'm taking you back to the book of Daniel. What happened to Daniel and his friends? They refused to bow down to the statue. So everyone from the kingdom of Babylon had even the ones who could not see the statue. They were told that, look, the statue is in that direction. So you need to prostrate to that direction. I believe that it will be the same thing with the Mark of the beast, worship the beast. There will be a certain AI projected everywhere in the world and everybody will have to bow down. And those who don't bow down, the, 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 this AI will detect and instantly the person will be killed. Come on now, saints. Let me tell you another thing that is programming people to be One with technology, one being half man, half machine, half human being, half something else. I told you that the book of Daniel, that statue, the end is clay, clay mixed with what? With iron. So it will be. It is happening now. Some people, we are clay, isn't it? Some people now are receiving microchips. Legs that are doing this and artificial, this and artificial, that they are receiving. Some countries, people already have a chip that allows them to go home, turn on the lights without, with ease. And another thing I want to say, saints, people become so addictive to technology that one day all they need to say to young people, I'm going to switch off everybody from all social media, switch off from the games, switch off from everything. You will watch the, the youths go mad. 
I saw the other day a 13-year-old, 12-year-old boy that killed his mother because she wouldn't give him a VR set. A VR set is a v virtual reality binoculars or whatever. And because the mother told him that, look, I cannot afford this, he took a gun and he killed his mother. A little boy. And society is so corrupted that because he's a minor, he will be out to enjoy his life. And his mother is now gone. So I'm here to say, saints, don't be too comfortable with sin. If God has told you to leave certain people behind, leave them. They are dead carcasses. Forget about the honey that you can scoop out of it. It is dead. God has already said to you, move on. I don't want you to be in this environment. Dead carcasses could be a job that you have to compromise in the in the things of God in order to have a paycheck in the end of the month. And you know what I'm talking about. Be comfortable with certain lifestyles. Could be in your job description. Cater for them. And every day you are corrupting yourself more and more. You are desensitizing yourself more and more because of the paycheck at the end of the month. You're going to have to make choices. To serve Christ and wait for him to feed you. Wait for him to look after you. Or to trust the system of the world and every day and every day you will be more and more and more like the world. More and more like the father of this world which is Satan. You're going to have to make a choice. Because what, what the enemy is after is your anointing. What the enemy is after is what God has spoken over your life. You can see that. The enemy was after Samson's anointing. They wanted to know the source of his anointing. They wanted to know the source of his strength. So they sent a Delilah to do it. And once they found out the source of his strength, what did they do? They terminated him. Some of you, you think that people like you. Oh, they like me. Oh, that's the why they are inviting me. They are after your anointing. They are after your hair, your oil that God has poured over your head. And once they have taken that, they have cut off your anointing. You're done. You as, you as good as dead because you will not have any efficacy in the world. You will not have any anointing to deal with things anymore. You will no longer be able to pray. You will no longer be able to call upon the name of the Lord and be answered because the anointing is gone. Remember that it was after Samson's hair grew a little bit that he was able to speak to God again and regain his strength. But it was too late. His eyes were gorged. His integrity was gone. He was once a mighty man and he was now just a slave. Somebody that the Philistines will mock and have a, a day off to mock him. What you don't understand, they were wanted so much. The enemy wanted to mock the God of the Israelites. But God will not be mocked. That's why he allows Samson at the end for his hair to grow and he reg regain his strength and kill the Philistines. But I'm here to say, saints, the, the enemy knows what kind of anointing you carry. The enemy knows what kind of oil is in your head. The enemy knows the source of your strength. And he's after it. And he knows that if he comes against you just like that, he will not succeed. So he has to introduce sin to you little by little so that you will get comfortable in sin. So that why? He can come and strike you and take your anointing and render you useless before God. Before your assignments, before the people that God has already predestined that you are going to make an impact in their lives. That you are going to change their destiny. So don't think that if the enemy is giving a demonic proposal to you, it's because you are very clever, very intelligent, you are all that. No, the enemy is after that gift. The enemy is after that assignment that you have. Oh, yes, the enemy doesn't go after people who haven't got a purpose. He fights those that have something that is a threat to his kingdom. Samson was a threat to the Philistines. Some of you that are watching me today, you are a threat to the kingdom of darkness. Because when you pray, 
something in the spiritual realm happens. Demons have to flee because of your fervent praying in Christ. You have such an anointing to pray. That's an anointing. Some people cannot pray. And he, you were a threat to his kingdom because you were praying for the salvation of your family. You were praying for certain things at your workplace to happen. You were praying to change the atmosphere. You were praying for the, the, the kingdom of God to advance. You were sowing for the furtherance of the kingdom of God. And he does not like that. So he's going to come after you. So you have to understand what is that you have entertained. In your life that is dead. Remember, Samson started very well, saints. He was even killing lions. That's just like how one would kill a goat. But he went to that, that dead carcasses that he knew well and good that he didn't have. He couldn't go there. He was in violation of his Nazarite um, vows. And he went. And when people read that scripture, they think that it's just scripture. No, that was the beginning of a fall of a great man, a man of valor. If Samson that could kill a lion, just like how one would kill a goat, fell, lost his anointing, lost his strength, lost his, his scepter of judgment over Israel and against the Philistines. What makes you different? What makes you different and peculiar? What is so special about you? If you notice when scripture like this is preached, not everybody can understand. That is why people are not here today because this title to them is not appealing. But remember, we are not called to be in the presence of God, to focus on things that are materialistic, to focus on breakthrough, to focus on this and that. We are called onto the presence of God to be made righteous every day so that every day we will be more and more and more like Jesus. So that every day we will have understanding of who we are in Christ. What is our mission? What is our purpose in the land of the living? How can we follow Christ, rever him and, and, and have anointing and have dominion? Remember, it is the anointing that breaks the yoke of the enemy. Think of this scripture. The enemy does not want you to continue to break yokes. Some of you, you are very dangerous to the kingdom of darkness. You are constantly praying, cursing, binding, breaking curses. And the enemy is thinking, what is the best strategy for Sister Dalila? What is the best strategy for Sister Denise? What is the best strategy for Sister Choma? What is the best strategy? How can I bring them down? And you need to be 10 steps ahead. You need to be able to see what it is that the enemy is trying to do. Some, sometimes some people come and say, oh, I've got a business proposal and this, this. But because you have been reading the word of God, because you have been meditating upon the word of the Lord and you've been praying and you've been fasting and you've been congregating with the saints. When you go to bed, you have a dream. That that same person came with a proposal and God in the dream will tell you, don't do it. So this is why, why this is. Why it's so important to have fellowship with Christ. This is why it's so important to meditate on the word of the Lord. Don't focus on the scriptures about breakthrough, blessings and, and advancement. Yes, they, they are important for the upliftment of the saints. But what about those scriptures that are giving you an upper hand against the enemy? Those scriptures in the Bible that are giving you understanding of how the enemy operates so that you will not be his next victim, so that you will not be the one that will lose your anointing and have your braids cut out and your eyes gouged. Now you are unable to pray. Now you are unable to do the things of God because why? The enemy came bit by bit to introduce sin in your life and because you are not aware of it, you are not, you know, spiritually discerning, you plunged into sin. Some people bounce back. 
But some people don't. They end up like Samson, dead. So God does not want that for you. He does not want that for me. He wants us to know all the devices of the enemy. And he wants us to expose it. Some of you after this ministration, you're going to have to down, offload or delete certain apps that you have because they are leading you to sin. Some of you are comfortable with certain things in your life that the Holy Spirit after this ministration will tell you that no, you can't have this in your phone. Some of you are addictive, addicted to certain music that is corrupting your spirit and is programming you to be perverse, programming you to just to cater for the flesh. And God is going to tell you, delete it. Some of you, you are entertaining certain people in your circle that don't mean well for you, that are, are corrupting you slowly but surely. Some of you live with them. And when you, you will notice that you've been corrupted by them because when you moved in to live with them, to share that apartment, the things that they used to do used to be so shocking to you. But now these things are not shocking anymore. These things don't bother you anymore. You are getting too comfortable with that dead carcasses. Because there is some honey that you are getting out of it. Be very careful. Because that same honey that corrupted Samson will corrupt you as well. The enemy comes with something, with a little honey. But compare the little honey that Samson scooped out of the, the, the lion to the massive carcasses of the lion that is decayed and dead. Compare it. Is there any comparison? Let us ask God to be merciful unto us. That we will not be desensitized to the lifestyle of sin and deprivation and decay and death that is being promoted in the world, that is being advertised, sponsored. That we will not accept that in our lives, that we will not allow it to enter our homes, that we will not allow it, allow it to corrupt us in our daily lives. Just because everybody else is doing doesn't mean that it's fit for you. Just because everybody else is eating it, it doesn't mean that you can eat it. Just because everybody else is entertaining themselves with it doesn't mean that it's good for you. Look at this film with the doll now, the pink doll. The doll that likes the pink stuff. Look how many people are now doing their dyeing their hair pink. Everything is pink. Every, look how everybody's participating. Even children that are children of Christian parents. They are now buying all the, the attire and this and that. Because the world is promoting it. We, the believers, think it's okay for us. We have been called unto righteousness, saints. The Lord our God called us out of the world. He did not tell us to partake. The Bible says you are in the world, but you are not from this world. So be very careful what it is that you are entertaining. I don't know. You know better than me. Let us all examine ourselves. And I'm not saying this as a hypocrite to tell you to examine yourself. I myself need to examine myself as a believer, as a woman of God. What it is that I'm allowing in my space, in my life, in my, even in my prayer time. And don't think, saints, that it's only immorality. Some of you think, oh, but I'm not doing this immorality thing. No. If you, your priority is your social media. Your priority is, is updating your status. Your priority is constantly checking your phone. Whatever it is that you do in your phone. That is your priority. That takes over your persona. Takes over your life. Takes over everything. Even your Christian time with God. Even your alone time with God. If it's taken over. You are desensitized by um, technology. Technology has you hooked. Some of you today, if they were to say that we are shutting down Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, there will not be no more social media. We are banning it. You will be miserable, scarcing everybody, insulting your family. Some of you will not even eat, not do anything because you are used to be 
entertained by technology. Some of you don't even go to a doctor. You go to Google and Google your symptoms. And you, you cannot go to a doctor anymore. You think that you know everything. You Google the symptoms and then what you go, you go to Amazon to buy the supplements. You are your own doctor now. Come on now, let's be honest, saints. Some of you, you think that you don't, don't need to go to church anymore. I have TikTok. I have YouTube. So what? I don't need to be with any Christian people. Come on now. I'm not saying, for, for instance, there are cities that a lot of people have gone to churches and the churches are very corrupted. The pastor is corrupt. I'm not saying that. I'm talking about you that have good places to go, that you can learn, that you can grow and you don't go. Some of you that some look at how many people are not on this live stream today because it's not breakthrough. It's not coming out. It's not this. It's not that. It's not that. So they're not here today because they're not interested in this kind of message. I'm talking about that. People who cannot hear the truth, they only want to hear that they will be rich, famous, prosperous, and that they will have a breakthrough in life. But they are not interested on where they will spend eternity. They are not in, interested where they will spend eternity. They don't care. They think that their eternity is granted. You know, some Christians believe that they will go to eternity because God has promised them. They don't understand that Listen, let me go to another serious topic. Some people says you can never lose your salvation. I'm telling you, you can. Look at Judas. Some people say once you confess Christ, you will go to heaven. It doesn't matter. You can lose your salvation. Look at Ananias and Sapphira in the Bible. Disobey God. Were cursed, died. Do you think they went to heaven? So what makes you think that you will not lose your salvation? It goes down to one thing. Who, who are you going to be serving the day you die? Who are you going to be committed to the day you die? That is all what it matters, saints. Remember the thief on the cross? He had the opportunity to, re to repent and God promised to them, today you will be with me in paradise. Come on now. I'm asking you. You can lose your salvation and be doomed. Do you know that? Some of you have lost your salvation a long time ago and you need to repent. Once saved, always save is a lie. We are to repent every day. That's why we always repent before God. It's this kind of misconception that lets people also, aids people to be comfortable in their sin. Aids people to feel comfortable that they are doing something that is against God and they know it. But they don't repent because once saved, always saved. God knows my heart. The Bible says the, 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 the heart of a man is desperately, desperately wicked. We cannot trust our heart. We cannot trust our emotions. We cannot trust our reasoning. We can only trust the word of God. That's why we need to always read the word of God. That is why we need to always be meditating upon the word of the Lord. Because every day there is something that we need to repent. Every day there is something that we are in violation with the word of the Lord. Every day there is something that we are doing that is going against God's commandments. Every day we must bring our flesh to be crucified. Because every day when we get up, our body is telling us something else. Come on. Every day the Bible is telling us to do something else that goes against God. Every day. I don't know about you. Sometimes you get up and you begin to say certain things. Sometimes, sometimes saints, the disobedience is because we complain. Something has happened and we, instead of for a minute, say, Lord, it doesn't matter what has happened. I give you glory. I know you were in control. I know that you have the answer for everything. We begin to say, why God is doing this to me? Why God this, 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 and that? And instead of us bringing our flesh, our worries, our concern and everything before the Lord to honor him regardless, we begin to complain. That is the flesh taking advantage of you. 
and bring leading you to sin. Some of us, we get up in the morning, somebody is annoying us. Somebody is saying something that is irritating us. We begin to curse them. And we forget that we are servants of God and we are filled with the Holy Ghost. We are not to engage in any conversation and arguments and slander and all these different things. And the minute we see that we are out of order, we say, Lord Jesus, forgive me. I sinned here. I should have never spoken to sister so and so like that. I should have never answered to my husband like that. I should have never spoken to my son like that. I should have never told my daughter what I said. How many of us? But because we have the Holy Spirit still convincing us of sin every day, we can come before God and repent. But some people don't have that. They have lost it long ago. And I'm talking to you. What are you waiting for? What are you waiting for? Some people say, oh, Sister Dalila, I need counseling. I need you to speak to me. Yes, I will. But some of you are so desensitized, desensitized to your sin. So many things that you are doing wrong in your life that you need the counsel of the Holy Ghost. You need the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Because if you do have the Holy Spirit in your heart, the Holy Spirit will not let you rest. The Holy Spirit will not give you peace. The Holy Spirit will not allow you to go to sleep until you repent. But some of you, the Holy Spirit has departed from you long ago. Because you began to do things entertaining the enemy. Every day, every day you allow another sin to come. Then another day to come. Another sin, another sin, another sin. Now you are immersed in sin. There is no conviction in your heart. You are in your 50s and in your 60s and you think that it's okay to wear those jeans shorts. They are so tight and short and you don't see nothing wrong with it. Something is wrong. You are a gentleman that you are now an elder, but you don't see nothing wrong in you going on Instagram and DMing young ladies that are young enough to be your granddaughters or your daughters. You see nothing wrong with it. I need to tell you the truth. You are not going to make it. If the trumpet was to sound today, you're not going to make it. Some of you, because you are single, you are not married, you, you think that it's okay to be watching P movies, downloading them on your phone. I'm not married, so I'm not in no adultery. You are co committing immorality against God. That is a sin. And that sin is so addictive that it's, they're saying it's worse than cocaine. Some scientist studied it, says it's more addictive than cocaine. Some of you, you started that habit of watching pee films from when you were very young. Now you're married, you have children, you are a grandparent and you're still addicted to it. And you think you're going to make it to those pearly gates. You think that God is going to say, well done, my good and faithful servant. You think that God is going to say it's okay. Some of you, you lie. You are a pathological liar. Everything about your life is a lie. Where you live, what you have, where what, your lifestyle, everything. Because you want to show the world that you are something that you are not. Who is the father of all lies? He's the enemy. And you have his personality. And you have his attributes. Do you think you're going to make it into those pearly gates? You will not. But I'm here to say, saints, if you are searching for God sincerely and you are willing to repent, you are willing to surrender everything to him, you are saying, Lord, I cannot hide my sins from you. I cannot pretend, Lord God, because you know my heart. You see even things about me that I cannot see. Lord, I'm willing to be broken by you. I'm willing to be molded by you. I'm willing to suffer in your hands punishment so that I will make it into your kingdom. Tell me, Lord, what it is that you want me to do and I will obey you. That is the servant of God. 
that is going to make it to the to those doors i'm not saying saints that everything is going to be perfect with us that we are going to be so perfect no but is the what is the desire of your heart what is what it is in your heart what is it that you desire what we desire tells us straight up what is our relationship with god some of us we don't desire god we desire what he can give us his blessings we don't desire to be in the presence of god we desire the things that god can give us because why when you desire to be in the presence of god because he is light everything that is darkness and decay in your life will be exposed and you don't want it to be exposed because you want to continue to indulge in that that you were indulging already so therefore you will not pray certain prayers you will not you will not submit yourself in a certain way to god because you think that that is for sister dalila that has a ministry that is for sister dalila who is preaching that is for brother so and so that is an asha that is for pastor so and so that is a man that is pre it's not for me i'm just at the flock i don't have the responsibility i don't have no it is for all of us the same bible was written for you and for me saints the commandments are for all there is this misconception that some people are saying oh i cannot live that kind of life because at the end of the day you know i've got a secular job and and all these different things I'm, I'm i'm not like them and you make a distinction in the christians they are business people and christians they are uh, are, are are like pastors christians that are evangelists. you make a distinction that look we are christians yes we are all christians but hold on hold on hold on yeah there are levels to this i'm telling you there are no levels to this the same bible applies to you i've got bad news just because you have a couple of millions in your account you have amassed a certain amount of money that sister dalila is nothing before you she you are a big man you are a big woman and you are comfortable so you think that oh no 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 that that is does not apply to me no it applies to everybody poor rich uh mid, mid you know middle class it's for all of us there is no exception you think that oh but i have to attend some dinner parties with some very rich people so i cannot dress into a certain way i have to be a uh, modern i have to uh, do th conduct myself in a certain way that is more with the times and listen you will still go to hell with your fancy dinner party with your fancy black tie event you still go to hell because when you are going to these places, instead of you being an ambassador for Christ, you are just blending in with, you know, with the sinners. And you will not correct so-and-so. You will not tell so-and-so because you, you're compromising. You don't want to tell your stance on certain things because you are afraid that you will not get a business deal cut you're not gonna be able to go to certain places you are not gonna be able to do certain things so then you are compromising because you want some of you are undercover christians oh yes you know how you have the spies they are agents and they blend in and and you will never know some of you are undercover christians only you and god know that you serve him the rest your friends your co-workers no one knows that you are a man of god and a woman of god because you want to keep it that way come on now when are you gonna come out of the closet <laughs> yes do you know that sometimes by you saying to your co-workers i'm a woman of god I'm a man of God. They will they will just sit down and do this. Let me observe her. Let me see what it is with this person. Mm, let me see. Do you know that the world is watching you? When you confess Christ, oh, Christ is my Savior. I'll die for Christ. They will just check you for three months. And when you pull out that cigarette, they will come. Oh, I thought you said you confessed Christ and you, you were now evangelizing. So, so what happened? You quit. 
You see? Sometimes you saying that you are a Christian at your workplace. People will not invite you to go and drink in a certain restaurant. They will not invite you to go to a certain cocktail party. They will not invite you because you said you are a Christian. So they know that that kind of invitation cannot apply to you. You choose. There's going to come a time in your life that you're going to have to make a stand. There's going to come a time that whether you like it or not, is either you're going to take the mark or not. That mark is coming, saints. Everything is pointing out for that mark. I don't have to tell you. you. Every day you watch the news, you can see that something, it's happening every day that is changing rapidly. Hmm? Have you noticed how they're making these, our streets more narrower? And some of the access to our streets is blocked. You can only use the main road to get access to certain areas. Because they're about to create these smart cities. You cannot leave your perimeter. You cannot leave that certain place for more than 15 minutes. It's coming, saints. But if you cannot see it, if you don't prepare yourself, if you don't spiritually prepare yourself, you will be one of those who will take the mark. Because you are so desensitized. You are so blind. You have accepted that sin is okay. You have been accustomed to it for so long that when they bring the mark, you're going to say yes, because you won't be without the internet. You won't be without your social media. You won't be without decent and electricity and gas and everything. You will, you, will, you will not want that for yourself. Some people here, they're already accustomed to go two days without food. The whole month without food because they are fasting. But some of you here, you won't, you won't even go three days without food. You have not been trained. You are not in God's boot camp. Oh yes, some of you, if I told you to pray more than five minutes, you can't. You don't know how to pray. You don't know how to come before God. You're relying on others to pray for you. You're relying on your mother to pray, on your father to pray. God is waiting. When are you going to commit with me and the things that I have and trusted you to? When? I am waiting for you to make a decision. God is just waiting. So you are going to have to decide. What do I want? What it is that I want God to do in my life? Where is he leading me to? Some of you need to know your purpose. Because yes, you have a career, you have this and you have that going on. But you need to ask God, what is my assignment? What it is that you want me to do? And he will reveal it to you. Because it's in his interest that you fulfill your purpose. He wants you to have meaning in your life. He wants you to fulfill that that he has entrusted you to, to do. So saints, I don't know what this message is for. But one thing I know, saints, check, examine yourselves. Don't wait until someone has come to examine you. No, because most of these people are, are hypocrites. They are just people that want to look like they are better than you, that they are something better than you. Let me read another word because I believe that scripture begs scripture. You see what happened to Samson that entertained that dead carcasses to scoop some honey out of it. Book of Proverbs 6, 27 to 35 says, book, no, book of Proverbs 6, 27. Can a man scoop fire into his lap without his clothes being burnt? Can a man walk on hot coals without his feet being scorched? Come on now, saints. You cannot partake in sin and think that you, it's not going to affect you. You cannot be in an environment of sin and think that that is not going to affect you. Some of you, you are in environments where the people around you are perverted. People around you are demonic. People around you are sick in the heads. 
and they don't mind telling you that they are sick. They don't mind telling you that they are ungodly. They promote that kind of lifestyle. And every day you are becoming more accustomed to it. But guess what? No one can take fire into his hands and not be burnt. It's going to happen. It's going to come a day where you are going to begin to feel the backlash of the sin of those who you are around. There's going to come a time where you are going to be faced with your sin. Your sin will look at you in the face and sometimes your sin will look at you in the face in the form of your child. Come on now. Let us entrust every area of our lives to God. And whatever God is telling you to stop doing, you stop it. Because you don't want that sin to one day come and challenge you. Look at you in the face and say, I'm here, then what? This is me. You don't like me now, but this is me. You've been allowing me into your atmosphere, into your surroundings. So therefore, I've taken over. I mean your child now. I mean your wife now. I mean your husband now. What are you going to do about it? We don't want to things to escalate to that point. All right, saints, we really don't. So I invite each one of us here today, including myself, to come before the Lord to repent. But don't do this prayer, saints, because you just, you want to repent and that's it. Be sincere, be honest with God. Perhaps there is certain things that you are doing, certain sins that you are committing, that you feel like the sin is more powerful than you, that no matter what you try to do, you cannot break free from that habit, from that sin. Bring it to the Lord. Be honest. Say, Lord, I don't want to, this lifestyle for me anymore. I don't want this lifestyle. I want to live in holiness. I want to know what it is to live in righteousness and to be obedient to you. I want to serve you sincerely, Lord. I'm tired. And God will honor that, that confession, that your repentance. He will, he will honor you. Because he deals with the sincerity of our hearts. He deals with how sincere we are before him. He doesn't consider what we have done before and how we have damaged ourselves and others. That's not what he's considering. He is considering the motive of the, 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 the intention of your heart. Do you mean it or are you just saying it because? That is what he's most concerned about. So don't worry. Everybody here is a sinner, including myself. There are areas in my life that I need to repent every day and I need the Lord to be merciful. But the gospel comes, saints, to teach us to live in righteousness. If the gospel, gospel is preached and you don't change and you don't feel, listen, it's not even that you don't change. You don't even feel the need to change. Well, you know, some of the ministrations that I hear that people don't even feel the need to repent. They are comfortable because the message is making them feel comfortable. What it is in your life that is dead, has a stench, flies everywhere, wombs. Check yourself. Check yourself. And be honest with God. You don't have to be honest with another man. Be honest with your God. The God of your salvation. The one who has created you. You don't need to be honest to anybody else. Because they need to repent themselves. We are to be honest before God. And he will honor your honesty. Remember the thief at the cross. He was honest. And he sincerely asked for divine intervention because he realized his mortal condition and also that he was going to have to face God in judgment. He realized that and he was honest. And because he was so sincere and so honest, 
Jesus pardoned him and allowed him in paradise. But there was another thief on the other side. Did he repent? He did not. Desensitized. Could not care less. It is what it is. Some of you are like that. You will see Jesus crucified right in front of you for your sins, for your transgressions. And you will say it is what it is. I got to do what I got to do. Some of you is like that. I need, I'm going to do what I need to do and that's it. That's life. Yes. But there is going to come a time that another life will start and this one will cease. You are a spirit. You're not going to be on this physical realm forever. You are going to transcend. You're going somewhere else. Where are you going? Have you asked yourself that question? And another question, why does, have, why does God have to allow you in his presence in his kingdom? Is he obliged to allow you there? The Bible says that only those who have repented and washed their garments in the blood of the Lamb will be justified and allowed to go in. You are to bring your garments before the Lamb of God every day so he can wash it clean for you. Every day. Some of you think I repented 20 years ago of my sins. Your sins 20 years ago are not your sins today. The way people used to sin 30 years ago are not the way people sin nowadays. So that argument is not valid. You need to come out with something better than that. Oh yes, oh when I accepted Christ in 1967, this is 2023. There was no social media, then there was no Instagram, there was no these things. Today is 2023. It's another day. It's another era. What are you doing to repent? Come on now. Some of us, when we leave the house, especially you, the gentleman, will concur with me. Every time you leave the, house, leave the house, you are repenting because women are half naked everywhere. Now we don't know what is undergarments and what is garments. There is no, there is no difference. Everybody is in, enjoying the flesh. I'm not saying that I'm sort of puritan that wears garments up to here. No, you can have fun. And have a nice dress that is nice and but is decent, isn't it? This is what we're I'm, I'm talking about the gentleman here. When you go out and you see that, that the women are wearing their undergarments outside. Yes. Back in the days when it was summer, you will men will be seeing ladies with the most beautiful dresses, flowing dresses with flowers and strawberries and whatnots and nice fabric. Today, listen, people are just in their undergarments and that is is the fashion of today and if you dare talk you are against women you are against you, you are against what did they say now you are not a a feminist come on so don't tell me that you repented in 1967 because in 1967 leaving the house was not a a dangerous mission. Now it is, especially for the gentlemen. They will be going to places and every women are half naked and, and they have to keep praying. It's very hard for the gentlemen. They, Lord Jesus, Father Lord, mm -mm. let my eyes be good, Lord. Let me not corrupt myself. The gentlemen are fighting a battle in the flesh. You think you're crucifying the flesh. Ask the brothers on this live stream. You will know what crucify the flesh is. Some of them in church go to church. The women there are wearing body cons. And it's not slim women, you know. It's women with curves. Women, the BBLs and all this. With a thong and, and a white see-through dress. And they are in church. And the pastor will not tell them anything. Because you are not to violate women's rights. And what not. Let them be. That's why some brothers don't go to church anymore. It's too crazy there. And they'll be jiggling. They'll be jiggling. Jiggling themselves through the service. 
as soon as the praise break team and the begin to you know the tambourine and they begin to jiggle everything and the brother said look if it's like that going to church i might as well just stay at home but this is what what is going on oh yes there's no shame so saints i don't know what is the area of your life that you are struggling with sin bring it to god saying lord i have a problem with my flesh and this is the problem this is how i have been entertaining sin in my life this 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 tell god don't need to tell your neighbor or your or your pastor be honest with your creator and you will know when you leave the house next morning you are liberated you feel as if satan himself has been rebuked for eternity oh yes you will see them in their underpants walking all about and you will not be affected by it you just pity them and say oh look, good lord this is indeed sodom and gomorrah as you said and you will pray for them but you will no longer be doing this investigating what and what you see the difference let us pray beloved saints father lord we thank you for today lord god for this powerful minister ministration lord god concerning your servants um samson lord god and how he fell into sin and lost his anointing and lost his strength because his hair was cut off lord god father lord we every day we walk like samson every day father lord there is something that is inviting us to commit sin inviting us to indulge in abominable practice practices lord god and every day we have to crucify the flesh and sometimes we get tired lord because everybody else is comfortable in it everybody else is doing it everybody else is indulging in it and we are the ones still holding on lord god and sometimes we want to quit and give up sometimes we are fed up because while others are feasting we are fasting oh yes lord while others are indulging in sin and demonic and diabolical practices we have to be here 6 30 in the morning 7 30 in the morning to worship you to listen to your voice and sometimes it looks like the world is having fun lord god and we are in misery we are father lord in not enjoying but Lord, I know that what the world is engaging in and it looks like enjoyment is death. It's like that dead lion, Lord, rotten, filled with flies and, and, and maggots. Father, Lord, we need you today more than ever. These are perilous times, times of sorrow, times of pain, times, Father, Lord, where the earth itself is shaking and, and having labor pains, Lord God. And we know that... The trumpet will soon sound, Lord God, at any given moment now. It's just a matter of time. But we want to be ready, Lord. We don't want to confess that we are ready when we know deep down in our hearts that we're not ready. That there are things in our lives that we are entertaining. That we are allowing sin to have dominion, control, authority, sovereignty over our lives. Father, Lord, we confess our sins to you because... We cannot hide from you, Lord God. We cannot hide from your presence. We cannot hide from your judgments, Lord God, and the condemnation that is about to come upon the disobedient human beings of this world, Lord God. We cannot, Father Lord, change the verdict that it is guilty, 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 Lord God. But Father Lord, we come here before you today in the mighty name of Jesus to sincerely repent before you. To ask you for another chance, Lord God, that you will baptize us once again with your Holy Spirit. That you will fill us once again with your presence, Lord God, that we will have discernment, Lord God. That we will have the willing power to say no to sin, Lord God. That we will refuse to partake in iniquity, Almighty God, and we will sustain a life of righteousness, O Lord. Be merciful unto us, Father, today. We are not here, Father Lord, because we want things from you. 
We are here sincerely because we know that one day we will die. One day we're going to transcend, Lord God, from this earthly realm to, to your spirit realm, to your throne to be judged. And Father Lord, we are asking you for the blood of your son Yeshua to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Oh yes, Lord God. We cover and envelope ourselves with the blood of your precious son, Jesus, as we go into this prayers, Lord God. We command any foundational handwriting fueling the altars of sin and perversion and problems to be deleted now and forever in the mighty name of Jesus. Altar of God arise and swallow every evil and demonic altar of sin and perversion in our bloodlines from the spiritual and satanic human beings in the mighty name of Jesus. Father Lord, we set on fire and every negative altar working to overthrow us and to destroy our destiny by sin and perversion in the mighty name of Jesus. Every diviners, Every diviner's fee paid on our heads be cancelled. The diviner's fee on our behalf and on behalf of our children and our entire family be wasted in the mighty name of Jesus. We are not a candidate for diviners. Neither the tactics and the antics to speak against us, Lord God, and to pervert us from your presence, Lord God, and from your righteousness, almighty God. Father Lord, we destroy by fire every agreement between death and everything that is death, and everything that, Father Lord, is decay, Father Lord, that is hindering us from serving you and from doing your will, Father Lord, in the land of the living. We lose ourselves from the grip of any evil altar of seed and perversion, holding our lives down in the mighty name of Jesus. We stand on the authority in the name and the blood of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, to burn down any altar that was erected anywhere on earth or the surface of the earth anywhere that is sponsoring sin, that is sponsoring lifestyle of perversion, that is sponsoring, Father Lord, all sorts of addiction, Father Lord, all sorts of demonic, Father Lord, lifestyle that goes against your word and your commandments, Lord God, in Jesus' mighty name. Father Lord, we render every aggressive altar that is refusing to cooperate with your will for us, Lord God, by sponsoring degenerative, Father Lord, lifestyle, even in our children, Father Lord. We curse them and we smash them onto repairable pieces in the mighty name of Jesus. Father Lord, let fire from heaven fall afresh today, Father Lord, to burn every sin in our lives in the mighty name of Jesus, that we will no longer feel comfortable with sin, that we will no longer tolerate, Father Lord, sin around us, that, Father Lord, when we are within our the confinements of our home, that we will say, no, not today in this home. We will I will not be entertaining you. My children will not be entertaining you. My spouse will not be entertaining you. We are living for Christ. We are the redeemed of the Lord. Father Lord, whatever it is that is sponsoring sin in our lives. Father Lord, whatever it is, perhaps an addiction that's been in the family, perhaps a lifestyle that has been in the family. Father, we want to be the ones breaking the curse. We want to be the ones breaking the sin that has been upon our fathers and forefathers today, Lord God, by entering into an agreement with you, Lord Jesus. We refuse to cooperate with sin. We refuse to say yes to degenerative lifestyles, demonic practices, Lord God. We refuse in Jesus' mighty name. We are making a new covenant today with you, Lord Jesus, that we want to serve you. We want to do what is right before you, Lord God. We want to be, Father Lord, the generation that will, Father Lord, live for you regardless of what the world is doing, regardless of what the world and Satan is promoting, regardless of what is trending, regardless of what is fashionable, regardless of what looks good, Lord God. We would rather be the odd one out. We would rather be the ones that, Father Lord, are, are the sore thumb, Lord God, than to be pleasing the flesh and the things of this world and being in compliance with the enemy, Lord God. Father Lord, I'm asking you today that the Holy Spirit will rest upon us 
afresh today, Lord God, to show us the errors in our lives that we are not yet repenting, that we are still entertaining lifestyle of sin, that we are still comfortable in sin and in degenerative acts, Lord God. Let the Holy Spirit show us, Lord God. Let the Holy Spirit show us so that we can ask you for forgiveness, so that, Father Lord, we will not do that, that, Father Lord, violates you, that, Father Lord, we will not do what that, that is evil and demonic and diabolical again, Lord God. Father Lord, we sever ties with sin. We sever ties with the kingdom of darkness. We sever ties with lifestyles that sponsor sin, Lord God. Father Lord, we will rather go without many things, Father Lord, that than to sin against you, Lord God, and do that that is evil against you, Almighty God. Father Lord, we repent. Not only for our own sins, but the sins of our forefathers. Up to 50 generations before us, Lord God, we repent and we, we ask you, Lord God, to be redeemed today. We ask you to remember the blood of your son Jesus shed on the cross of Calvary for the remission of our sins. And we ask you, Almighty God, to be made whole again. We ask you that you will give us strength so that we can continue to live in righteousness and in holiness. And Father, Lord, that we will only desire righteousness and holiness, Lord God, and not the things of this world that are sponsoring sin, Almighty God. We pray that, Father Lord, today you will speak life unto our bones, our marrow. That, Lord God of Israel, you will blow the wind of life into our nostrils, that we will resurrect in our sins in Jesus Christ, so that we can live a victorious life free of sin and condemnation and shame. Because of the bloodshed of your son, Yeshua, we have been redeemed. We have been made whole in Jesus' mighty name. Father Lord, thank you for your presence today. Thank you for this ministration. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for your Holy Spirit. Thank you for your peace that surpasses all understanding. Thank you, Father Lord, for once again showing us what is wrong with us, Lord God, so we can repent on time, Lord God. No one knows tomorrow. Tomorrow is not promised to us, Lord God. We only have today, Father Lord. So today we have made a decision that we will follow you no matter what, that we will obey you no matter what. Father, Lord, even if we have to lose something, Lord God, doesn't matter, Lord. At least we have not lost you. At least the Holy Spirit has not departed from us. That is what is important, Lord. The rest is vanity upon vanity upon vanity. For what does it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose its soul? Nothing, Lord God. And what can a man give in exchange for his soul? Your son said that, Lord, and it's true. So we surrender, Lord. Have your way, Lord. Take and uproot from our lives everything that has not been planted by you, including friendships, acquaintances, businesses, whatever. We are giving you permission to take it, Lord. We don't want to have it anymore because it's a dead carcass in our lives. There is stench, there has a stench that has reached your high heavens, Lord God. So we thank you, Lord, for everything that you have done, everything you are doing and about to do. In Jesus' mighty name, amen, amen, and amen. If you have prayed this prayer, saints, know this, that from henceforth you have given the permission, God permission to intervene in your life, to have dominion, to come into your life and uproot everything that has not been planted by him. And in replacement, he's going to plant what he wants to produce good fruit. Oh yes, that is going to make you, make you advance, make you go ahead and have the victory of eternal life. I will close this ministration before we go into the prophetic hour with the following scripture. That seek ye the kingdom of heaven first and all these things shall be added unto you. If you're truly in the presence of God and your priority is to worship him, to serve him, don't worry about your sustenance. Don't worry about how you're going to make it. Don't worry about it. He will make a way for you. Oh, yes. He will make a way for you. He will uplift you. He will give you glory. He will give you all the desires of your heart according to his will for your life. So don't worry yourself. Some of you, you are thinking that, oh, perhaps if I leave this place, if I leave 
this and this and that and I, 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 I will be at loss. No, the greatest loss is for you to lose your soul. For you to go into the pit of hell forever because of a little something here in the land of the living. Don't worry about it. The God of Israel is a provider. He never fails his children. He is faithful until the end and he has all power. And if you are still here in the land of the living alive to give him glory, it is a miracle. Because the enemy, if it was his will, he would have destroyed you long ago. But God is a God of second chances. God is a God of repentance. He keeps giving us another chance and another chance and another chance because he knows that eternity without him and damnation is, is something that no human being was fashioned to endure. All right, saints. Glory be to God. Father, Lord, upon your ministration today, Lord God, we thank you for calling us unto righteousness. I'm asking you today, Almighty God, that you will reveal all things to your children so that they will be set free, they will repent. And whatever it is that you want to do in their lives today, have dominion, Lord. Use me as one of your vessels, Father Lord, your oracles in the land of the living to speak to your children so that your children will get a word today, Lord God, and be uplifted, Lord God, and that whatever it is that you want to do in, in their lives, Lord God, do it today, Lord God, we pray. We, we, we beg you, Lord God, be merciful, Father, in Jesus' mighty name. Speak, Lord. Have dominion, Lord. Have authority, Lord God. Have dominion, Father. Have authority, Father. Have dominion, Lord. Have all authority, Father. Have dominion. There is a person here not so long ago you consulted a witch because of your husband that you were suspecting that he's been unfaithful to you. And as this ministration was going on, the Holy Spirit kept telling you that, look, you should have not gone to that witch. That witch, she used some shells and bones and things like that to tell you about your life and your husband. And she even gave you things for you to put on your husband's food. So that this person that he's having an affair with, they will stop having an affair with them. God is telling you to identify yourself right, capital me, repent. Because you, by going to that which you are giving the kingdom of darkness permission to control, manipulate your life. And for how long are you going to fight your husband with charms? So every woman that he goes and has an affair, you're going to have to go to witches. You need Jesus. Jesus is the only one that can bring your husband into salvation, into repentance. Witches cannot do it. They will just drag you to hell with them. So write capital me on this live stream. Don't be afraid that perhaps somebody that knows you is going to um, snitch as we say. No. We are here, all of us, to repent. And if God is pointing to you this situation, it means that he has a solution for you. Just write capital me on this live stream. Say, it's me, Sister Dalila. Just pray for me so that I can repent today and that the Lord will help me and restore my marriage. But write capital me very quickly so that I can pray for you. Say, it's me, Sister Dalila. Don't be ashamed. There are moderators here that will not allow people to come after you or retaliate or whatever. Your information will be confidential. Somebody here, identify yourself quickly before. I'm not going to ask again. If you don't want to identify yourself, that is your, your own choice. I will not be forcing anybody, but God has shown me that you have consulted a witch doctor concerning this situation. And if you really want a solution to your problem, your solution is Jesus. There is nobody else that can give you a solution to your problem but God. All these little things that people do with the witches and consulting is just a quick fix that will drag you to hell. It might look like it's working, but it's not working. The enemy is fooling you. He wants your soul. And he wants to kill, steal, and destroy. So it will look like you are having 
the upper hand against this rival or what not. But you, what you don't understand is that you are making your life even more demonic by the day and giving the devil authority over your life. You need to repent. Just write capital me very quickly in Jesus' name so that the Lord will be merciful unto you, so that the Lord will forgive you, so that the Lord will show you the way out, a way of escape for you and restore your marriage. And not only salvation will come into your home, but you yourself, your husband and your household will receive salvation from Christ Jesus. Identify yourself by writing capital me so that I can pray for you. But if you don't want, it's fine. It's your life after all. Father Lord, I'm asking you today to be merciful, Father. That, Father Lord, the people who are identified on this live stream, Lord God, they will repent. They will come to you, Lord God, for the solution of their problems, Lord God, and not to the kingdom of darkness. Father Lord, the lady that has gone to a witch to consult a witch concerning her marriage and her husband that is having an affair, Lord God, I pray that she will identify. That, Father Lord, she will give her name for prayer, Lord God, so that she will take the bold, bold step to confess you as Lord and Savior, Lord God, to have a firm commitment with you, Lord God, and not depart from your word, Lord God, to go after other gods seeking for solution to her problem, Lord God. Father Lord, I thank you for today, and I pray that you bring divine revelation, Lord God. That, Father Lord, you will open doors where there are no doors and ways where there are no ways for, the, for your children, Lord God. Father Lord, I pray that today, Lord God, your children will come into repentance and, Father Lord, they will attain forgiveness from you, Lord God. I thank you, Father. I thank you for all that you did, all that you are doing and about to do in Jesus' mighty name. There is a person here that you are facing great persecution at, at work, but is your boss. Nothing that you do is right, even when you do more than what you have been requested to do. But it seems like it always finds fault with the things that you do. And it doesn't matter what you do to, to you know, finish your work on time, do your best. There is always finds something, even the minimal things to criticize you, to, to even humiliate you in front of your colleagues. You receive the victory in Jesus' name. Father, Lord, this boss that is being used by Satan to go after your daughter, to humiliate her, Father, Lord, to persecute your daughters, Lord God, and your sons. Father, Lord, I'm asking you that whatever demonic power is using this boss, Father, Lord, to torment them, Lord God, day and night in that job, Lord God, that they don't have peace. Father, Lord, bind this evil and demonic spirit that has gone into this boss with everlasting chains of the Holy Ghost fire and cast it onto the bottomless pit of the abyss forever and ever so that this demon will no longer use the boss against them, Lord God. I pray that you will break this demonic yoke, Lord God, with your power and your anointing that breaks the yoke of the enemy, Lord God. In Jesus' mighty name, amen, amen, and amen. The Lord is showing me a person here that some weeks ago you were short of money and you went to a supermarket. You did have some money to buy half of the groceries, but there was something else that you didn't have the money and you took that thing. It's, you took, it's a steak. You took the steak from the supermarket and you said, well, I've been doing my shopping in this grocery shop for so long. Even if I take a steak, so what? Um, it's not stealing because I've been coming here, I'm faithful to them, and now I'm in need, I will take it. Perhaps sometime I will do a bigger order to compensate for what I took. God does not work like that, beloved. You need to repent. You took something from that supermarket that does not belong to you, and that is wrong, and God has a solution for you. You will repent on this live stream by writing capital me, and what you will do is that you will go back to that supermarket. You are going to get the same steak that you took. Pay for it and leave it. Don't take it with you. Go back and put it back. All right? Because God is not going to allow people to steal. And you cannot be in this presence with this sin. This is something that God has against you. Just write capital me and repent. 
Write capital me and repent. Say, Jesus, I'm sorry for what I have done. I want to repent. I know what I did is wrong, Lord. I was in need and I thought that I could take it and I was comfortable in my sin, but I want to repent. Just write capital me. Don't be afraid that people will see you. There is no one here that has no sin. There is no one here that has not committed sin. All of us, we are sinners. And all of us, there, there are areas. You repent, beloved, in Jesus' name. Father, Lord, as your servant has just repented today, Lord God, be merciful unto them. Father, Lord, I pray that, Father, Lord, as she repents, Lord God, you will restore. That, Father, Lord, you will forgive, Lord God. And that, Father, Lord, that you will, they will experience your presence, Lord God, and your Holy Spirit, so that they will not go back to their vomit, Almighty God. I pray, Father Lord, for deliverance to take place, Almighty God. I pray, Father Lord, for salvation to take place in Jesus' mighty name. There is a lady here that God is showing me that one of your best friends has just had a baby. And since you saw that baby, you are jealous of your friend. You are saying, why is it that is she that has a good, good husband and a child and I don't have a child? I perhaps will never know what it is to have a child and you are beginning to resent that friend because of the blessing that she has received from God. God is dealing with your heart and he's saying that this is not the right feeling to have. You need to ask God to forgive you and to cleanse your heart, to cleanse you from all unrighteousness, from that resentment and bitterness you are having against your friend. Since you had this, since you visit this friend, you cannot have peace. You are jealous. You are entertaining bitterness in your heart that why is it happening to her and not in your life? Repent. Ask God to forgive you. Say, Lord, I release my friend. I don't want to be jealous because of the blessing they have received from, from you. Father, Lord, bring me my blessings that belong to me, Lord God, and make my heart right. But you need to repent. Write capital me. I will not call anyone again over and over. I used to do that. I don't do it anymore. And if you come to my inbox later on, it is your loss. Because sometimes I don't go to my inbox. Because I counsel people and I have to go through those who I'm counseling. Then I will go again to see if there is anyone else there. So if you don't want to repent, that is between you and God. God has shown you the area of your life that you are in, at fault, that you are in sin. And he is telling you so that you can repent. He's telling you so that he can heal your heart. He's telling you so that you will not be the person blocking your blessings because you are in rebellion against God. You are entertaining the sin of jealousy and all these different things. So just write capital me if you want to identify so that I can pray for you. And that as you repent, that the Lord will cleanse your heart your spirit and your soul from whatever it is that you are entertaining in your heart that is evil and is not of God. Father Lord, I'm asking you today to continue to speak to your servants, Lord God, that Father Lord, you would, you that know all things, Lord God, you that you are in charge of your children, you that have the, des the destinies in the palm of your hands, Lord God, that you will speak, Father Lord, concerning their lives, Lord God that you will give them healing and restoration, Lord God, and that repentance will take place today, Lord God. That, Father Lord, you will begin to change hearts, Almighty God, that you will begin, Father Lord, to transform people, Lord God, that you will begin to mold them into your image, Lord God, that they will come before you to repent, Lord God, to make amends with you before it's too late, Lord. Heal them, Lord God. Restore them, Lord God. Father, Lord, touch areas of their lives, Father, Lord, that they don't want to be touched, addressed, Father, Lord, so that they will be set free, Father, Lord, from whatever satanic and demonic yoke it's tormenting them and is giving them, Father, Lord, a spirit, Father, Lord, of defeat and sadness and sorrow and pain, Lord God. Father, Lord, manifest your power. Manifest your anointing that breaks the yoke of the enemy. Heal your children, Lord God. Heal them, restore them, give them peace, Lord God. Father, Lord, anoint their heads with your oil of gladness. Establish them over your pairs in the mighty name of Jesus that they will go forward, Lord God. That, Father, Lord, they will be in spaces that you have prepared for, for them, Lord God. 
that, Lord, you will bring their destiny. Help us closer and closer to them, Lord. Father, Lord, I pray, restore, heal, transform, Lord God. Give the divine, Father, Lord, um, um, alignment to their lives, Lord God, that they will not be touching things that they have no business touching, that they will not be in places that they shouldn't be, Lord God, that they will not, Father, Lord, entertain in their homes, Father, Lord, dead things, Lord God, things that they that are corrupting them, Lord God, things that are making them unclean, Lord God, in Jesus' mighty name, amen, amen, and amen. Saints, those of you here who are, the, it's the first time you are here and you've heard the ministration and the word of God and you want to repent, just write capital me and says that to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. That's all you need to do. If it's your first time here, you are welcome. And I invite you to accept Jesus as your Lord and your Savior. That the Lord will be merciful, forgive your sins, and that you will come into salvation. You're welcome, Sister Esther, in Jesus' name. Sister Asiao, Beta Wilbert. God bless you all saints as you accept Christ as your Lord and Savior. Turn away from your sins. Don't go back to your vomit, to the things that you were doing before. This is a new life for you today. God is healing women from um, menstrual cramps. God is healing somebody that has bad menstrual cramps. If you want to, to accept healing, accept healing, say I accept healing. I receive healing in Jesus' name. You that have this difficulty with cramps, receive it in Jesus' name. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody has accepted healing. Glory be to God. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody as well that you need glasses, but you have received prescription and you don't have uh, the money for the glasses. Say, I receive divine provision from God. God is going to provide the money for the glasses. I receive provision from God. I receive provision from God and God will supply that need. You will have the money to buy your glasses in Jesus name. Receive divine provision from God. Don't worry yourself. In Jesus name, glory be to God. You that are waiting for papers to start a license. Somebody's waiting for a license to be granted. Receive your license in the mighty name of Jesus. Say, I receive it. Type in the chat, I receive it. You that are waiting for a license to commence some business, say, I receive in Jesus' name. You that are waiting for license, receive it from God in Jesus' name. Receive it, receive it, receive it in Jesus' name. Glory be to God. Saints, you that have accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior, know that there in heaven there is great celebration because you made a decision to follow Christ. It is in the Bible, saints. Welcome to the kingdom of God. As one of his ambassadors, I welcome you. And I urge you to get a Bible so that you begin to read the word of God for yourself. You will not be bamboozled. You will not be deceived by any preachers. There are false prophets, but because you will know the truth, the truth will set you free. Thirdly, saints, if you would like to see what we have done before in previous ministrations, you can go onto my bio and you will see the YouTube um, icon there. Just click and it will take you straight to YouTube. Perhaps you have subscribed to this live stream and one day you will be at work or on a shift and you can't be live. At least you will do the catch up there. That is why the YouTube is also there. If you have been urged by the Holy Spirit to also give to this ministry, also the PayPal is on the bio as well and also available on YouTube description. Saints, I'm going to pray for the faithful tithers and for those who are constantly on this ministry, supporting, giving their very best. Those of you who gave to the live stream, I have a bless. I speak a blessing over your life. That you shall never lack any good thing. That you will go forward. That the Lord will continue to order your steps. So that you will not fail. That every project that God has given you will be successful. That the Lord will supply all your needs. That that account that you used to sow into this live stream as he went live will never run dry. Money will touch money into your account. I curse poverty of your life, limitation, stagnation, lack of achievement, and reproach. And I speak over your life that death will, will always be far away from you. 
Oh, yes, and shame and reproach will never know your address in Jesus' name. I speak over your life that wherever you go, you are blessed and highly favored. You, sh you shall have unmerited favor wherever you go. Great men and great women will always extend their hands to help you. You will never be in any difficulty or lack in Jesus' name. Glory be to God. Come back and testify. The Lord is going to do amazing things for you. Now I'm going to pray for those who are on the list. Faithful tithers, the givers, the ones giving offerings. And if you have given while the ministration was going on, don't worry. I will pray for you after and I will collect your name and add it onto the list. All right? Because obviously I'm live and I won't be able to take your name down. But don't worry. As soon as I come out, I will pray for you and I will add your name onto the list. Father, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus, here we are today, Lord God. Once again, consecrating the lives of the faithful tithers and givers. And Father, Lord, those who are offering constantly so that this ministry can keep going. So that, Father, Lord, I can continue to be on this seat, Father, Lord, preaching the gospel, Lord God. And not having to worry about my next meal. Father, Lord, as they have been faithful to you, Lord God, above all, Lord God. And they have been sponsoring me and helping me, Lord God, to continue to fulfill my purpose in the land of the living. I am asking you today to be merciful unto them. Visit them today, Lord God. I pray that, Father Lord, you will visit Sister Jolene Stewart, her husband Jerry, and their children, Lord God, with all the blessings of Abraham in Deuteronomy 28. Father Lord, I pray that you will supply all the needs of Sister Sadie Mercedes, Lord God, Sister Sherelle Edwards, Lord God, that whatever is their need, Father Lord, whatever areas in their lives they need restoration, need healing, Father Lord, I need your touch, that Lord God, you will touch them, that Lord God, you will restore them, Father Lord. Visit Sister Choma as well, Lord God, and her children and grandchildren. Cover them, Lord, cover her, Lord Jesus, with your precious blood. I envelop her and her children and her grandchildren. And her finances in your precious blood that, Lord, you will supply all her needs, that you will restore and heal and give healing and peace that surpasses all understanding. Visit Sister Gail Ned today, Lord God, with all the blessings of Abraham in Deuteronomy 28. Wherever there is a need, Father Lord, and, and sorrow and pain or whatever, it's taking her peace, Lord God, and and, uh, uh, and her mind, Father Lord, from your, from your provision, Lord God, that you will grant her peace, that Lord Jesus, she will be sustained, that Father Lord, she will never lack any good thing, that you will open the floodgates of heaven and be merciful unto her, Lord God, to bless her, to give her healing and restoration, Lord God, in Jesus' mighty name. Visit Sister La Pasha Mensa, Father Lord, and Sister Alexander, Father Lord, with the blessings of Abraham in Deuteronomy 28. Father Lord, be a provider, O God. Protect and heal and restore in Jesus' mighty name. I pray for the Christian Women Fellowship, Lord God, the leadership, Lord God, that this Father Lord organization will be led by the Holy Spirit, that this organization, Lord God, will fulfill its purpose and it will not be frustrated. Father Lord, visit also Sister Fortina Waltoa, Father Lord, with the blessings of Abraham in Deuteronomy 28. Whatever they need, Lord God, in order to fulfill purpose in the land of the living, Father Lord, grant it to, the, to her, Lord God. Give her the desires of her heart. Visit Sister Georgina Simmons with the blessings of Abraham and Deuteronomy 28. Every project that you have placed in our heart, Lord God, let it come to pass, Lord God. Father Lord, make her, Father Lord, be in a place where she can grow, that she can thrive, that she can fulfill her purpose and assignment in the land of the living. Visit Father Lord also, Sister Elaine Todd. Lord God, I pray for divine provision over her life, that whatever is a need in her life at present, Lord, that you will meet them that need. Lord, that you will restore. Lord, that you will provide beyond measure, Lord God, in Jesus' mighty name. Visit, Father Lord, this moment, Father Lord, Sister Lori Nobles Gray, with the blessings of Abraham in Deuteronomy 28. 
Visit also her children, Lord God. Protect them. Oh, Lord God, deliver them from all evil, Lord God. Be a wall of fire around them all. Be a provider, Lord God, beyond measure. Father, Lord, I pray that they will, she will receive a response from heaven, Lord God, concerning all the areas of her life in Jesus' mighty name. Visit, Father, Lord, Sister Ravina Collins today with the blessings of Abraham in Deuteronomy 28. Father, Lord, whatever it is that is a need in her life, Lord God, meet her need, that she will have peace that surpasses all understanding, that she will have, Father Lord, your peace that is unmatchable, Lord God, that you will visit with great provision, Lord God, and response from heaven. Oh, bless Western, West, Western Harlem plants, Lord God with the blessings of Abraham in Deuteronomy 28. Be a provider, Lord God. Father Lord, wherever there is a need in Sister Brenda's life, Father Lord, I pray for divine provision. I pray for open doors, Lord God. I pray, Father Lord, that they will never lack any good things, Father Lord, Sister Daniel, Sister Teresa, that the blessings of Abraham in Deuteronomy 28 will announce their presence wherever they go, that the mantle of greatness shall be upon them always in the mighty name of Jesus. Visit Sister Amanda Hughes, Lord God. With the blessings of Abraham in Deuteronomy 28. Begin to open doors where there are no doors, Lord God, and ways where there are no ways. Father Lord, I pray for divine provision. I pray for open doors, restoration, Lord God. Father Lord, I'm asking you visit Brother Ty Tyrone, Lord God, and and with the blessings of Abraham in Deuteronomy 28, I pray for divine visitation, that the Holy Spirit will continue to guide him, uplift him, Father Lord, give him the victory in every area of his life, in Jesus' mighty name. Visit Sister Rikita Walla, Lord God, with the blessings of Abraham in Deuteronomy 28. Continue to anoint her head with your oil of gladness. Establish her always over her peers in the mighty name of Jesus, that she will continuously be the head and not the tail. She will always be above and ever beneath. Father Lord, visit Sister Venice Apton, Sister Selina Bradley, Lord God, with the blessings of Abraham in Deuteronomy 28. Touch Sister Rose Member, Lord God, with the blessings of Abraham in Deuteronomy 28. Touch her children, Lord God. Touch her little girls, Lord God, with your precious mantle of greatness and honor, Lord God, and with your oil, Father Lord, of, of anointing, Lord God, and healing and restoration in Jesus' mighty name. Visit Sister Tracy Middleton, Lord God. And Sister Sheila Ray and Termisha Hayes with the blessings of Abraham in Deuteronomy 28. Open ways where there are no ways for them, Lord God. Make a way of escape for them, Lord God. Don't let them go hungry, Father Lord, or breaking bread, Lord God. I pray that you will visit also Sister Lorianne Baker, Lord God. Grant her the victory in every area of her life. Father Lord, I speak elevation in her career. I speak prosperity in her finances. I speak healing, Father Lord, and good health over her body. Body. Visit Sister Shemaya Cates. And Father Lord, I pray that whatever it's her need, Lord God, that you will meet her at the point of her need with a surprise, Lord God, that she will not believe what she has gotten from your hand. Father Lord, visit Sister Natasha Findlay, Lord God, with the blessings of Abraham in Deuteronomy 28. Begin to open doors where there are no doors for her, Lord God. Make a way of escape for her. Father Lord, when her enemies are looking for her, Lord God, embarrass them, Lord God, and hide your daughter under your wings in Jesus mighty name. Visit Brother Antonio Silva, Brother Eric Campos, and Sister Simone Morgan with the blessings of Abraham in Deuteronomy 28. I curse poverty, limitation, stagnation, lack of achievement, reproach of their lives, and I speak the blessings of Abraham and Deuteronomy 28 over them, Almighty God, that they will never lack any good thing in Jesus' mighty name. Visit Sister Asila Preston and Sister Raishanda Blake, Lord God, with the blessings of Abraham in Deuteronomy 28. Open doors where they are no those, Lord God, and ways where there are no ways. I speak signs, wonders, and miracles, Lord God, and the unexpected from you, Lord God, shall happen, shall take precedence in their lives over everything that the enemy has spoken over them, Lord God. It is cursed and it will never bear fruit in Jesus' name. Visit Sister Antoinette Lewis, Brother Andrew Apostolos, Sister Tasha, and Sister Antoinette Fleming. 
with the blessings of Abraham in Deuteronomy 28. I command every poverty, limitation, stagnation, lack of achievement and reproach to die by fire forever in their lives in the mighty name of Jesus. From henceforth they shall walk in the blessing of Abraham in Deuteronomy 28. Wherever they go and whatever they are doing, Lord God, destiny help us shall locate them from the four corners of the world, Lord God, to aid them to fulfill purpose, to be uplifted, Lord God, and to be able to do things that no one in their generation has ever done before in Jesus mighty name. Father Lord visit Sister Michelle Wallace today Lord God Sister Danielle Ellen Eve and Sister Michelle Johnson. I pray, Father Lord, that wherever they are on planet earth, Lord God, they will be under your wings, Lord God and your new anointing that breaks the yoke of the enemy, that you will begin to break the yoke of poverty of their life, the yoke of infirmity, the yoke of limitation, the yoke of stagnation for eternity, and that today, Lord God, you will bestow upon their heads the blessings of Abraham in Deuteronomy 28. Father Lord, give Sister Ebony Smith Sister Roberta Davids, Roxy Ann Bell, and Sister Natal Natasha Fogler, Father Lord, divine understanding. Give them the Holy Spirit, Lord God. Give them anointing, Father Lord, to tap into heavenly resources, Lord God. And never, Father Lord, be in any want, so in any needs, Lord God. Open doors where there are no doors and ways where there are no ways for them, Lord God. Father Lord, I consecrate their tidings and their offerings unto you, Lord God. That whatever they have given to this ministry, Lord God, you will reward them a million folds, Lord God, that they will never go without their reward. Visit Sister Priscilla, Lord God, with the blessings of Abraham and Deuteronomy 28. Sister Aisa Bigam, Lord God, that they will never lack any good thing, that they shall prosper in all that they do. Blue oceans as well, Sister Posha Slick, Sister Priscilla, Lord God, that whatever it is they want to receive from you today and Whites 515, they will receive it, Father Lord, and they will not go without their reward, Lord God, that everybody who has been present on this live stream will never lack any good thing, Father Lord, that they, as they leave the live stream, Lord God, signs and miracles and wonders will begin to follow them and manifest in their lives in Jesus' mighty name. Amen, amen, and amen. You are all blessed and highly favored saints of Almighty God. And as you leave this live stream, know this, that the Lord, your God, is a faithful reward of all those who diligently seek Him. You will never lack any good thing. And you are going to come back to testify that the Lord, your God, is good that he is faithful and wonderful and mighty to deliver you and to grant you according to the desires of your heart. Shalom and have a good day. God bless you, saints. God bless you. God bless you.